it's almost like courting someone. You first need to find out a little bit about it, and then after then, then you go out and seek and start trying to get and get that in here. So I believe in that that we do need a, a strategic plan, but as it's already been stated too, to sit down and to talk with all of the members inside the city government not just there but also outside and develop a plan with our county government and to also talk to people in our state legislature. Legislation is going to be the direction that we're going to have to need in order to get those into in order to get that into our city. Ms. Hawkins can wave those signs, can't she? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Okay, Mr. Abbott, this will be your question first. Step by step, how will you reduce the racial tension that has become so apparent on our city council? And how long do you think it will take to resolve what has become such a damaging pattern? Wow. <laughs> the elephant comes right out in the middle of the room, doesn't it? Um, the racial tension that has developed seemingly in my mind over just the re very recent past is really a shame and uh, and really and truly the relationships is is a lot of what i'm all about and um you know i think the simplest thing to do is just that we can just tone down the rhetoric a lot um one of the one of the things that 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 I have been involved with is um, I, I've started reaching out and being involved with some with some guys and a couple of different groups that um, that are that are reaching into the black community and there again we'll push that elephant right on out in the big middle here but uh, that you know for I guess for each one of us um, there are certainly cultural differences that, that we have to deal with and, uh, and I think that it's very important that we become involved with each other, that we understand that this is not about black or white. It's not about those kind of things, but it's about what's best for this city. And by all means, as, as, uh, as civic leaders, um, we just cannot allow this kind of a thing to, to take place. Step by step, um, as mayor, one of the first things that I, I, I will do with the city employees, with, uh, with, with the citizens, and, and certainly with the leaders, is put in place uh, core values, integrity, uh, transparency, uh, common courtesy, those kind of things. And uh, of course, employees, you can sort of demand it of, but whenever you have volunteer people on the, on the council, all you can do is just kind of point them in that direction. And so uh, I think leaders lead, and I think that leaders lead other leaders. And, and I trust that um, where I come from, from, from my perspective, that if we can just leave all of that behind, we can accomplish something. And certainly uh, it's worthwhile for us to work at, uh, very much so, because obviously, and we've seen this in the recent past, that when that's in the, in the room, nothing gets accomplished. And so it is very important that we, that we correct that. We just got to love each other. That's it. Thank you. Mr. Sanders? Well, that's what I was about to say. It's one of those things that you just got to love each other. First of all, as, as, as mayor, uh, there is a, a, an actual protocol within the city council, and he would direct any rhetoric that's going on inside the, uh, in, in, inside the meeting. And he's to stop and to bring it back toward the meeting so that people will understand that we're there to handle the city's business. As, as far as the racial tension, uh, uh, whether or not be within the community, we should first, as mayor, to understand and let people understand a little bit more about diversity. Um, and diversity is not one of those things where you turn back around and say, well, okay, I just understand your views, but you've also got to understand the views of the other individuals also. And, and, and to open those lines of communication between the races would eliminate anything that uh, misguidedness, any type of miscommunication or misinformation. A lot of the reason that I've seen uh, in looking at uh, uh, some of the things that have been going on is based clearly on misinformation. 
and it's up to us as city leaders to be able to get out there and, and do the true and the correct information and let people understand exactly what it is that's going on within the city. Openness in government is also one of those things that will allow, will eliminate the fuel that, uh, that I see that has been used to try to perpetuate the situation. But to, to, for, as the mayor, to open up the government and to allow people to be able to talk with their leaders and to give them real and true information would eliminate any type of misguided information, misunderstandings, and, and those type of things uh, within our government. Uh, the other thing is, is partnerships, is to partner with our uh, local uh, schools and, 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 and other business leaders and to discuss with them exactly what we're trying to do in our city government and to, again, go back to the planning that we had already decided that we were going to try to do and to plan that growth and be inclusive to show everyone that no one is trying to set someone aside that everybody's invited to the table, that everybody can be a part of this government and a growing part of the city. Thank you. Ms. Wine. I'm glad you brought up that um, uh, this question, because it's a question that um, the country has raised, and particularly uh, at the time of Obama running for election. Um, racial tension um, is a fact in, in this country. I think that uh, here in Blyville, I don't know if it's so much racial tension as it is being fair across the board. In 2000, the census of 2000 said that African Americans were 52.1%. In 2010, it's estimated that African Americans will be 89.1%. Now, uh, we don't want to deal with figures, but we gotta deal with reality. In the mayor's office, we have no person of color. In, uh, in city government, in the fire department, we have 3% people of color. In the police department, we have 17% people of color. That is not representative of our population. We have a responsibility as, as a government, uh, as leaders, to make sure that there's a balance. We have a lot of people who are qualified, in fact, as a city council person, I submitted at least four names to go on the commissions and boards uh, here in the city, and they were not entertained. These were qualified people. It's not that they were of color. It was that they were qualified. We have to get past the point of our comfort, and we have to include everybody in our community. And a way to do that is start being an example. Uh, you'll have an opportunity, uh, irrespective of what the uh, paper said, uh, you have an opportunity to elect a, a mayor of color. You also have an opportunity to elect a woman the first time. So that's two historical things. We must, as leaders, go step by step and look at the fairness of the representation of the opportunities or the fewer opportunities that are here in Blytheville. Thank you. Mr. Sanders, this question will go to you first. This is a two-part question about retail business in Blytheville.